Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is an introduction to variable scope. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my website here, javacjava.com, click on the begin button. I'm going to scroll down to the scope tutorial here. Variable scope intro. Now a variable is a name memory location that can be assigned a value while the program is running. Access to variables depends a great deal on where the variable is first created. This tutorial will focus on variables created inside of a method body or as parameters in the method signature. Variable scope will determine what parts of your program have access to certain variables. In many previous tutorials, I've referred to the area inside of an open and closing curly brace as the code block. Right? Variables created inside of these code blocks cannot be accessed outside of the code block. Control flow statements like the if and for statements typically have code blocks directly following the closing parentheses. Nested code blocks are called inner code blocks. The nested code blocks have access to the variables created in the outer code blocks, but not vice versa. Okay, so basically what you have here is your, is, a, is like a typical method. You'll have your return type, your method name, and then your parameter list enclosed in the parentheses. And then you'll have your method body inside of the opening and closing curly braces here. Now the method name and the parameters, just this portion right here, comprises is what uh, the components of the method signature are. Just the method name and the parameter list. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over this here a little bit. Um, right here, if we declare an, in, um, an integer variable a equal to zero, right? This is visible to everything, the entire method, including everything inside of these code blocks. So here we have nested code block number one. And we can take A and we can add one to it. That's fine because A is visible to everything in the outer code blocks. Now if we create an int B equals zero, B is in code block number one now, right? B is visible to everything inside of this code block right here. So outside of this code block down here, B is what's called out of scope at this point in time. We can't we cannot access it. Now let's put another nested code block inside of here. We'll call this one code block two. We can add one to A because it's outside of the code block. It's in an outer code block. We can add one to B because it's in an outer code block. Now if we create an int C, um, set it equal to zero, and then we can add one to it, we can, we can obviously do that because it is inside of this nested code block. So it's in this code block scope. Once we come out of this code block here, we can still access A because it was in the outer code block, right? B is in the same code block here. Now C is out of our scope, so we can't say like C++ anymore because that, that variable is, in, is no longer in scope here, okay? And at the end of our nested code block number one, the only thing we can access this point in time is A because it was declared um, in out, well, basically declared right up here at the beginning of the method here, right? B and C are out of scope at this point in time, so we can no longer access them. Okay, let's do some code and play around with this sort of stuff here. Let's scroll down here, highlight, hit Control C to copy, right click or right click and select copy. Let's move this off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop. If you don't, you can create one by going new, shortcut, type in cmd, next, finish, and that'll create that for you. We're going to open up our command prompt here. First thing we're going to do is type in java c, type in enter, and then basically that will scroll through a bunch of options for the Java compiler. If you get an error message, then go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You're gonna to want, to want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing on. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. Then we're gonna make a directory MD, Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Okay. Um, then we're going to create a folder and we're just going to call this variable scope. Oh, 
you know what the MD would help. Make directory variable scope, CD variable scope. And we'll call this, and then we're gonna create our source code file name. We'll call that uh, variable scope.java. Yes, we'll paste all this code in here. Control V to paste or right click and select paste. Go ahead and save this here. Okay, so basically I just have everything that we discussed right here, only I've got, we can play around with it um, by printing off stuff and various different things here. So let's go ahead and clear our screen, type in Java C to compile this, and then we'll go through line by line after we run it here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is declare our int A um, inside of our main method right here. And basically our main method starts here and ends there. So that's the scope of the main method and everything is being executed top down. So we initialize variable A equal to zero and then we'll begin our nested code block one. So we can go and add um, one to A here, right? And then we'll create to initialize our variable B inside of nested code block um, number one. And then we'll create a nested code block number two here, and we'll add uh, one more to A, add one to B, initialize C to zero, and then we'll do uh, add one to it. So at this point, basically A is one here, A is two here, right? B is one here, so and C is one. So we should see in code block number two, A equals two, B equals one, C equals um, one. And we have access to all of these variables because they're in outer code blocks. So basically what we've got then is on the first three ones here in code block number two, A equals two, B equals one, C equals one. Excellent, just what we were, um, just what we were expecting there. Okay, and then we didn't pass this any particular arguments here, but I wanted to throw this in there to just show you that the arguments are also visible in every inner code block as well. And I'll do that here in a second after I go through the rest of this. So now we're outside of code block number two. So um, we can add another one to A and another one to B, and we can print those out, right? Three and two now. The one thing we cannot do here is go ahead and print off C anymore. We can't add one to C, we can't access it. If I save this, right, and I recompile this now, see we're gonna get an error message, right? Error cannot find symbol, and that's because it's out of scope. Okay, let's go ahead and fix that here. Let's save this again. Recompile it, let's clear our screen, clean all this up rerun it. Okay, so at that point in time, C, which we created right up here in nested code block number two, is out of scope, so we can no longer access it. Now when we end our nested code block number one, both our B variable and our C variable that were created inside of both of the scope in there, and those code blocks are now out of scope. So the only thing we can do is we can add, um, add one to A there, and then we can basically display A in method body A equals plus whatever A is equal to now, right? In method body A equals four, right? Okay, excellent. If we try to, for example, do this, save this, and access those, we're gonna get two error messages there, right? Printing to right here. On this line here, cannot find symbol, and C cannot find symbol, and that's because of they're out of the variable scope. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and come back down here. I'm gonna comment out those two lines again, just so we can compile this here. Clear our screen. And I'm gonna just put in a, an admin, right? Throw a, put an argument into this here. And so basically a method parameters are visible in every inner code block. Args at element, the string array args element zero equals admin, right? So that, that hit this particular line of code right here inside of all the nested code blocks. Everything, basically the point I'm trying to drive home is all the inner code blocks can read every variable, including any parameters passed outside of, uh, in the outer code blocks. 
Okay, so let's talk about, um, these are basically just code blocks, you know, putting in the opening closing brace, right? But code blocks are actually part of like the if and the for statements as well. So let's say, for example, we're gonna come down here and just say if A is equal to greater than three, which it is at this point, right? We got another nested code block right here, right? We can say the uh, the value of a inside of the if code block there, right? And then we can create a new variable called d, right? And initialize it to six. And we say in the if statement code block, d equals d. And what we've got right here in the if code block, a equals four, d equals six. So that's, that's working out pretty cool there, right? We can still see a which is created, you know, outside of the if statements code block. Now let's talk about, do another line of code here with four, right? And this is a simple for loop here, looping four times, right? And it's displaying the value of a, and then it's displaying the value of i. Now this int i here, right, even though it's not created inside of the code block, still belongs to the code block of the for statement, right? So that can be a little confusing here. But this is a for declaration, and just because the int i is being declared and initialized outside of the opening and closing curly brace, it still belongs to the code block here, okay? So we're printing off the value of A, which we can see because it's outside of the code block, and the value of I, which is technically inside of this code block for the for statement, right? And up here, you can see we're looping through. Four is the same every time, and we're adding one to I. Now let's come down to the last thing on here right and we will uncomment these lines out here and d of course was created inside of the if and the i is created inside of the for statement okay now both d and i are out of scope at this point in time so let's go ahead and save this and we'll get an error message just to drive home the point and kind of prove it there and we get our cannot find symbol d right and cannot find symbol i because both of them are out of scope there. All right, let's go ahead and comment this back out. Comment that out, and let's save this. Clear our screen, compile it one more time, run it one more time. And uh, so basically that's that. I'm gonna leave you with some uh, final thoughts here. Understanding code blocks is really important to, um, to some of the, the future stuff that we're going to do there and that uh, variables are only visible um, in the, within the scope of what they're, where they're located there, right? So in other words, like any inner code blocks can always see variables created in outer code blocks, but it's not vice versa. That's the point I'm really trying to drive home. Um, Let's go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.